Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you are a beautiful crowd, I'm telling you. And I'm, I'm honored to be here tonight. I want to thank uh, the people who've set this up. Dr. Hobson, I know, has done a lot on that. Dr. Rich Hobson. And I've got my campaign chairman, Bill Armistead, here. Uh, I'm honored to have Congressman Gomert from Texas and Sheriff Clark and Steve Bannon and all the people that have spoken. I can't go on. And, of course, there's Kayla. Now, I'll tell you, she's not only a better speaker and more encouraging than I am, she is better at business and running the foundation than I was. So I appreciate her so much, and she's been a good mother, and uh, she has closer contact with kids than I do. They go to her for all her problems. <laughs> but this is the last rally before the vote on Tuesday. We're Alabama. We're Republicans. And we're not going to stand by and let other people from out of state and money from California control this election. This election for the people of Alabama. We dare defend our rights and we will defend our rights in the United States Congress. I would gladly have declined an honor to which I find myself unequal. I have not the calmness or impartiality which the infinite importance of this occasion demands. I will not deny the charge of my enemies, their resentment for the accumulated injuries of our country and an ardor for her glory, rising to enthusiasm, may deprive me of that accuracy of judgment and expression which men of cooler passions might possess. So let me beseech you then to hear me with caution, to examine without prejudice and to correct the mistakes into which I may be hurried by my zeal. Those were not my words. Those were the words of one of the first American patriots, the father of the American Revolution, Samuel Adams, as he stood before a crowd such as you to tell them what they had done with the Declaration of Independence. And the next thing he said is probably the most important thing in the history of our country, something that you probably never heard the real purpose of the Declaration, why they did what they did, and why we need to follow their example. We have explored the temple of royalty and found that the idol that we have bowed down to has eyes that see not, ears that hear not our prayers, and a heart like the nether millstone. But we have this day restored the sovereign. To whom alone all men ought to be obedient, he reigns in heaven and with a propitious eye beholds his subjects assuming that freedom of thought and dignity of self-direction which he bestowed upon them. From the rising to the setting sun, may his kingdom come. Now I'll tell you something. In this country, we have explored the temples built by the Democrat and Republican Party in this country and found that they have idols that do not hear us and do not see us. We need to move forward with the vision that they had to recognize God, recognize he's on his throne, and he is and cares for this country. You know, three years before I was born, 1944 was three years before I was born in 47. Four. America was at a crisis. We were at war with Germany and the Nazi armies of Adolf Hitler. And on June 6, we were about to declare the Normandy invasion. And our president at the time was FDR. He was a Democrat. And he got on these crackling radio programs. That, that's all they had is radio. They didn't have microwaves. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have... Nice, fancy cars. Most of them didn't have electricity. But one thing they did have was faith. And FDR said that they were about to invade. And he said, Almighty God, our sons, pride of this nation, 
have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. Their road will be long and hard. Many will die, and some 408,000 died in that war. And then during the Normandy invasion, many, many more thousand died. And he said, but we have faith. Faith in each other, faith in our soldiers, faith in our men, our so women. And without that faith, we will not prevail. Thy will be done, almighty God. They did prevail in that. I was born three years later. And I didn't, I wasn't old enough to remember it, but I remember what the second Democrat that took his place said. The American people stand firm in the faith which has inspired this nation from the beginning. We believe that all men are created equal because they're created in the image of God. And from that faith, we will not be moved. And during his administration, they had the National Day of Prayer. I went to the second grade when Dwight David Eisenhower took his place. And under Dwight David Eisenhower, they put under God in the Pledge of Allegiance. So we would never forget the strength of this nation, where it came from, and what it was about. In 1955, they put in God we trust on all our money. And in 1956, they gave us the motto, in God we trust. Then we started to forget God. We started to forget where our strength was and where it came from. 1965, I went to West Point. And on the banks of the Hudson River, I took my first oath to the United States Constitution. And I went to Vietnam. And I thank Captain Staley, who I haven't seen for 45 years. He still looks good. Where is he? Okay, he's up at top. He was a, he was a great Army officer, and we served a tour over there. Now, I'm going to tell you, we lost people in my class from West Point, my classmates on the gymnastics team, my roommate, we had people die. And I think that the country that they died for and the Constitution they died for, what has happened to our country today? We have forgotten that faith upon which we were founded. I'll tell you a little bit about this because I want you to know where I came from and what I've been about. My, oppos my opposition has always been about my acknowledgement of God, my so the sovereignty of God, the Ten Commandments. I was removed from my job. When it came up about the definition of marriage, and I stood for marriage between a man and a woman, they suspended me. I entered this race to represent the people of Alabama and what they believe in government, and what they believe that our government should be, to acknowledge the sovereignty of God and an understanding of the Constitution. That's the things that are needed in, in Washington, D.C. This race has been strange. I told somebody the other day, I don't know if any of you have heard of the story, about Oscar Davis. Oscar Davis was born and he would look kind of strange. He was tall and lanky. He had a funny way of speaking. And he walked funny. And people, Funniest thing about Oscar was his middle initial was D. So his initials were ODD. <laughs> and so you can imagine his nickname going up to school. It was Odd. They'd say, here comes Odd. There goes Odd. Have you seen Odd today? And he got so angry about being called Odd. And he said when he died, he didn't want his name on his tombstone. And so they honored it, and he eventually died, and they just put his date of birth and date he died. And people would walk by his grave, and they'd look, and they'd say, well, that's... <laughs> Sometimes you can't get away from it. But I'm going to tell you, this race has been very odd. We've had two presidents and one candidate for president, who didn't make it, thank God. Do robocalls in this state. 
we've had two vice presidents make appearances in this state, and we've had several senators to contest my election, one from this state. You know, we talk about draining the swamp. I don't know if you remember this, but it's difficult to drain the swamp when you're up to your neck in alligators. And that's where we are. We're up to our neck in alligators. We're up to the neck in people that don't want change in Washington, D.C. They want to keep it the same, keep their power, keep their prestige, and keep their position. And we've got to change that. Swamp. Drain the swamp. But you've got to understand, they've got a lot of money. They had it in the Senate Leadership Fund. They challenged us during the primary with over $30 million, according to MSNBC. We now exceeded that by another 10 to 15, if not more. There's been a lot of money in this race because everybody in this state, most of the people in this nation are watching this election. Why? Why is it? Because it's the first senatorial election after the election of President Donald Trump. We know they're not moving in Washington. We know that we want them to move in Washington, but they're putting a lot of money to keep what's there there without change. As my wife said, I'm very distressed with the fake media. The false ads that have been put on by the fake media, actually one television station disproved the fact that I got over a million dollars. They knew it. They still run that. We've seen Highway 31 in this general election. We don't know who they are. We know they spent a lot of money, and they know it wasn't for me. And they've been taken off the air. We've had threats on social media for anyone that would back this campaign. We've been intimidated, other people have been intimidated, and we're tired of it. The fake news began after I was 11 point lead in the general election. Now I want you to understand this. The Washington Post put out this terrible, disgusting, article saying I had done something, and I want, you to, I want you to understand something. They said these women, two, had not come forward for nearly 40 years, but they waited to 30 days before this general election to come forward. Now they've allowed their pictures to be on a political advertisement, and they've gone on national television arguing their case after waiting 40 years during which I served in three public offices in the state. I ran five state campaigns, three county campaigns in this same county, and never once was this mentioned. Never once was it identified despite numerous investigations, despite the Ju Judicial Inquiry Commission, the Court of the Judiciary coming to our county and investigating for anything that would be wrong so that they could take me out of office. But 30 days, they come forward. Now, an article came out entitled, Former Jeb Bush Staffer Planted Anti-Roy Moore Coverage in Washington Post, February 8th. Here's another article. Tim Miller is the man's name. A Never Trump ex Jeb Bush staffer admits planning anti Roy Moore story in the Washington Post. Now, let me ask you this Do you see this on the television? Do you see anybody, do you see anybody arguing that on news media or investigating that? No. The reason being because they don't want the truth out. Here, here's the title of this article that was just 
introduced yesterday, where's Roy Moore? Because I took approximately two and a half days to take my wife out of this mess and to let her relax with her son at West Point. I did that. I didn't run from the truth. I was back in Sunday and I was back on the radio. But their headlines are, where's Roy Moore? Well, that's one reason I don't talk to the media for you at the present. Because you won't print the truth. For example, Fox News came out today and said my opponent was 10 points ahead of me. On the same day, Emerson had me nine points ahead of him. Somebody, somebody isn't telling the truth and we're going to find out tomorrow. And actions are going to speak louder than words. All this mess is going to be over tomorrow with a vote. The verdict rests on the people of Alabama. One thing I don't like the media has said that a lot of people who are Republicans claim they're going to vote for me and just ignore what they believe. I'm going to tell you, if you don't believe in my character, don't vote for me. The differences between my opponent and me are vast. Abortion, he favors full term. I want to overturn Roe versus Wade because it was unconstitutional when they made it. He goes further than the United, liberal United States Supreme Court with regard to right to life. Transgender rights. He believes in gender, transgender rights. In the military, in their bathrooms, and then says they support children. Same-sex marriage. He, th he thinks I'm a bigot. He thinks that because I favor traditional marriage ordained of God, that that's the wrong position. But the people of Alabama don't believe that. In health care, he believes that we should increase Obamacare, which will increase our rates, diminish our services. I believe we should repeal Obamacare. I, should, I believe the federal government can't run the veterans' hospitals. How are they going to run our entire health care system? Immigration, he considers it wrong to make them carry cards. He considers it right to let them continue the immigration system that we had under Obama. I'm in favor of the RAISE Act, which Jeff Sessions has helped push, which would restrict immigration, and we can go to it. One of the biggest differences between us, I do not support federal involvement in the education systems of this state. Common Core should be eliminated. In our military, I would increase the strength of the military. I know the military. I love the military. I served in the military in Vietnam. I know what we need in the military. And if we do not have a strong defense, our peace is subject to the terrorists overseas. My philosophy has always been, since the academy, duty, honor, country. These three hollow words reverently dictate what we can be, what we ought to be, what we will be. They are your rallying points to build courage when courage seems to fail, to regain faith when there seems little, to be little cause for faith, and to create hope when hope becomes forlorn. I want to make America great again with President Trump. I want America great, but I want America good, and she can't be good until we go back to God.
one nation under God. You know, many years ago, I wrote a poem. It's called One Nation Under God. And it, it's about returning to that creator God upon which our rights were founded. You know, in the days of Hosea, Jeremiah, those, the same thing happened to their countries, to their lands. The people got so arrogant because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Well, we're doing the same thing. I can't find my notes, so I have to do it from memory. <laughs> One nation under God was their cry. Indeed, their declaration. Upon the laws of nature and of nature's God, they built a mighty nation. But unlike mankind before them, who had walked this earth and sod, these men would never question the sovereignty of God. That all men were created was a truth self-evident. And to secure the rights that God gave us, was the role of government. And should any form of government become destructive of this end, it was their right, indeed their duty, a new one to begin. So with the firm reliance on divine providence for protection, they pledged their sacred honor and sought his wise direction. They even lifted up an appeal to God for all the world to see and vowed their independence forever to be free. But I'm glad they're not here with us to see the mess we're in. How we've given up our righteousness for a life of indulgent sin. For when abortion is no longer called murder, and when sodomy is deemed a right, then good is now called evil, and darkness is now called light. And no longer does man see a need for God when he's in full control, for the only truth, self-evident, is in the latest poll. But with man as his own master, we fail to count the cost. Our precious freedoms vanish, and our liberties are lost. Our children are told they can't pray in school. And when they teach them evolution, why can't they see the fear of God is the only true solution? Our schools have become a battleground while all across the land, Christians just shrug their shoulders, afraid to take a stand. But from the grave, you can hear their voices cry. The victory's already been won. Just glorify the Father as did his only Son. And when our work on earth is done, and we've traveled where you've trod, you leave the land we left to you, one nation under God. You know, as I think about the many Americans, how many veterans we've gotten here? Just raise your hands. Look around you. Look around you. You know, there's been so many that have given their life for this country. They're gone. Our country's changing. What we say here in the words of Lincoln, the world may little note nor long remember what we say, but we should never forget what they did. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought there at Gettysburg stood for. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take an increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. May God bless you, the state of Alabama and the United States of America. Thank you.